Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Project Management and Control. This video tutorial I am making to demonstrate multiple float path MFP analysis in Primera P6. So first we will see what are the multiple float path or MFP in Primera P6 program. So multiple float path when we are making any program in Primera P6 we add the activities and we link them provide the relationship and when we run the schedule or network calculation Primera calculate the uh, path and there's maybe possibility that there are several uh, possible uh, path uh, in the network logic and which are using to determine in the critical path or near critical path. So as we know that when P6 is calculating the network, doing the network calculation, it is using critical path method and as per definition the critical path is the longest path in a program which determine the duration of the, uh, the project and any uh, and this all the activities on the floor and this critical path are called as critical activities and any delay in these activities will be considered as a, uh, will be considered impact the project completion. So once we are doing the critical path analysis, the program calculating the critical path. In addition to this, we need to determine near critical activities, uh, to, uh, which is, can be considered the second longest or third longest path, to, so that we can know that what, act, uh, what uh, activities we have to take care to avoid the future delay in the project. So to calculate the multiple float path, in Primera P6, we need to determine the. Uh, we need to make some settings. To make these settings, we need to press F9 to make the schedule dialog box. In the schedule dialog box, you will notice that there's one uh, button option, and when you click this option button, you will find uh, one tab is advanced, and in ad advanced tab, you are select to calculate the multiple float path, and there are several settings uh, like for that not uh, type of float. Uh, which type of float you want to use, total float or free float, or as you, you, you want to define any activity which for which uh, consider as a completion of, of the any particular milestone, or it, you need to define how many float path you are going to calculate. So as you see on the sc screen that we show the uh, uh, scheduling schedule dialog box. In the schedule dialog box, when you press option button, the schedule option uh, dialog box will be open, and here we select the advanced tab. In the advanced tab, you will see that once we click on the calculate multiple, multiple float path, there other option will be uh, active, which is type or we need to select the type of float. We need to define this is a display multiple float path ending with activity. Here you define the activity from which you are going to calculate the multiple float path. Uh, you display we want to display the multiple float path activity and the last option is the number. You define the number of multiple float path you are going to calculate in P6. So as we see here that uh, we have one critical path and in addition to this there is a second or third critical path which can be considered as a sub-critical uh, sub uh, float path which, uh, uh, which uh, and, and sometime when we are, uh, not sometime always, when we, show, we are going to show this uh, critical path or sub-critical path which is second or third critical path in the uh, in P6, we, there are some activities which are common for the critical path and the sub-critical path also. So you can see the critical path will be considered as a primary, you can, uh, so a primary path and the other second or third will be considered as secondary part. So some of the activities which are the part of primary or critical part or um, and the other critical part also will be shown only in the primary critical part only. Uh, I, I repeat again uh, in critical and subcritical activities, uh, subcritical uh, part, uh, some activities are which are the part of both critical path and subcritical path. In this case, activity will be shown only on the critical path, uh, uh, path portion only. Other portion it will not be shown because activity will be shown only one time in the screen. So the activities which are part of more than one float path will be shown only in the primary path only. So this is the one and we uh, uh, the one more question is that why we are using the total float path. So total float path is using uh, for the multiple float path analysis is that when we are considering the overall project uh, and we are not uh, considering the any uh, intermediate milestone or any uh, separate any other uh, requirement to show or show. So in this case, uh, when we are going to use uh, to uh, use the overall project. Uh, pro project program and oral progress and oral program we are going to use total float path.
and uh, for in this case the end activity for the project should be either project finish milestone if there is any milestone or and and or any activity which going to finish the project normally when we are uh, checking the program we note we are noticed that there should be one activity which is a project start which should not have any predecessor and act one activity should be project completion which should not have any successor so when we are going to use total float path in our uh, my, um, multiple float path analysis we should note that the our last activity of this float path should be the uh, my project finish milestone or any activity which is a project completion and if or uh, in other in other way if we are going to investigate any intermediate activity for example if our program is considering several uh, my can several control milestone or we are going, going to check the progress of this milestone we are going to use free float and in this case we are going any intermediate uh, completion uh, for example if our project having several buildings we want to know how the each building is uh, progressing so in this case we need to uh, going to use free float and uh, we are going to and in this case and in, uh, we are not going to use project completion. Instead, we use the completion of building uh, building A, completion of building B, completion of building C, etc. Like this. So for this uh, well, this activity is particularly uh, based on the total float and overall project completion and progress. I am planning to another separate video. So uh, for this multi, uh, for this free float and to check, calculate the. Uh, uh, the effect or progress of intermediate milestone or intermediate activities in the program. So let's see this in uh, Primera P6 itself. We open and one of our old program, program. This project I was working before. Here is saying that this program is updated one. Uh, this project was in progress, and you can see that we have actually start. So if you want to see how many float paths are there, and this uh, we are going to use multiple float path analysis here or no, we need to press F9. Once you press F9, you can see the schedule dialog box will come out. Here we are going to select option. In the option, as I told you before, there is two tabs, general and advanced. We go to advanced and then click the this calculate multiple float path. Once you click this one, the other option will be uh, activated. Here, as you see, we have two options. Either we have to select total and free float. As I told before, total float is used for the overall project and for the overall project completion. And free float is used when we are going to have intermediate milestones or intermediate task to be show, show the progress and here display multiple float path ending with activity so for example if you want you have several activities for as i said before if our project contains several buildings building a b c and you want to see how building a is progressing you just add one activity completion of building a and you show this activity here so it will then in this case the float part will be shown will be uh, show the uh, progress of building a we will see this in another another video and after this we need to define the number of part to calculate here i just select 100 you will select the number of part depends on the project if your project is big you can make more number of float parts similarly if the project is small you no need to make big number so here i just consider 100 float part once you do this one and just schedule the program once you schedule after the selection this one uh, when the schedule is done we press f9 again and go to view log whenever you are checking the log of in your program make sure that you run the project before if you're not running the project and you just press f9 and click view log it will open the previously scheduled program which is other than the program you are dealing with now so always um, is always run the program first then check the uh, schedule log here we can see that our program having around 6700 activities and this has one activity start which have no predecessor and then we have activity without successor without successor is a project completion and overall project completion date we have this two one is the activity another is a milestone then we have auto sequence activities uh, this i have already one separate video to how to uh, eliminate this auto sequence activities uh, and then the activity without actual date this error we need to be rectified here and then we have finish milestone predecessor have different calendar okay and then we have critical activities after critical activities we you see that we have activities that are not on any float path this 6200 activities are not on the any float path so what we'll do here we just go here and make the option 
a set and go to advanced and instead 100 you can make 300 okay and then click again and schedule before we have around 6196 activities which are not on any path so if you run the program again and after run the program if you go and check the log file again after run done, done we just press append again and press view log and we just maximize this one and then we see that we have now this our uh, auto sequence activities there are two sequence activities should be there because this updated program so as i told before that we can eliminate this auto sequence activities sometimes clients cancel and client are not accepting and then some activities this are the error and critical activities after critical activities you have now activities that are not on the float path 5739 before it was 6200 now 5700 so it eliminates uh, 500 activities and bring on the and on the path similarly if you increase the number of path more this number can be reduced more so once you do this one we want to show this load path on our screen to show this screen we we'll just go group and sort and the group or sort just click the f to go and select load path and click apply so you can see here that you have for this our first load path and then you, if you go again you will find maybe 300 float path 264 you can see and we have now 300 float path because we select the 300 path so it show it calculate the 300 paths so you can make 1000 because this is still so many activities are not only on any path so you can see that our project is now uh, sorting now if you want to sort the project go just go into group and sort and go into sorting you can see early start so in, if you say early start it will be uh, activity will be organized in early but if you want to show in float path here you can find float path here also and just apply you can in this case if you do like this you can see that activities are not in organized some activities which are early are down so we want to show this again so in this case we just go in group and sorting and in sort make it instead of float path make early start and then apply okay so now it is will be in the sequence so if you want to see which float path here in the uh, column also just go in the columns and there's multiple float path option just click this one and then you can bring here float path number and this float path order so in the float path order uh, it will uh, order the activities in the uh, in any float path for example path number one or path number two three and there is several activities so this flow float path order is the order of activity in a float path so we'll see this little in detail if you apply here you can see that this is our float path one and you can see one three two four five six so here you can see that this number are not order and two should be come first similarly if you go other you have seven eight nine this is seems okay but if you go down you will find that 38 39 this is okay 36 30 see here 33 37 36 this numbers are not out in order so in order to make this order just go in group and sort and going to sort again and here instead of only start you just select float part order so it will bring the activities in the sequentially apply and if you go now here you can see here that this part number one and this part number one consists six activities and these activities are in order now this only leave part number two and this all the activities are in the order now so now you can see here this if you see this analyze this whole part you notice that in our part number one is not cannot be considered as a critical but yes part number two is a critical and here you can see that there's a big gap uh, between mobilization and preparation submission of vinyl metal supports so if you go this activity you can find here that we have a lag of 30 days so that's why lag is not always recommended to be used in a program because you see here every time mobilization this activity keep on dragging one month so instead of if instead of using this uh, 30 days lag if you use some activity and then we put some progress the the duration after mobilization 
will we keep on re re reducing but in this case if you put food the lag we cannot reduce the lag uh, or we have to need the discuss this with the engineer before changing this lag so in this case it is something consider the change in the program so sometime the engineer is not allowing this one but if we have this activity we can update this activity and in this case the every time we update this uh, gap will be keep on reducing but if you put the lag and there is no progress this gap will keep on dragging the project completion so here you can see that our first critical path is the start with the preparation and submission of the vinyl metal, metal support. So to avoid any delay in the project, we need to focus on this activity. Okay, so for example, if we keep the uh, control on this activity, what will be the next? So if you go down here, you can see the next is the preparation and submission of uh, ceramic tile number 102. So in this case, you can see here that this is the second critical part. So to control, if you control the first part, then we have to go move to the second part. We have to focus on this activity at the same time so that there is no delay because of this activity. Similarly, if you come down, you can see over that creating ceiling paint preparation for the dry area level 14. Here you can see that this is this area from uh, data date to the start of this activity is empty. This is in fact not empty the activities of this float part number five are the path of the float part number two for example if you see here this uh, here you can find that this is the activity which is driving the activity so if you click this this is uh, drive 107 and you go on this activity you will find that this activity is a part of float part number two which is our first or primary critical part so as we discussed in uh, initially that once the activities which are the part of critical part and subcritical part so it will be shown only in the primary part which is our critical part so uh, it will not be shown on the subcritical parts only but it is be there so if you come to float part number five you see that this is the gap this gap in fact there are the activities which are the part of the uh, uh, floor part number two, which is our critical part. Similarly, here you can see this August. After August, the, the remaining part portion will be the part of the critical part. So I hope this adds something new in your uh, knowledge and it will give you insight of Primera P6 and it will improve your productivity and your understanding of the program of the works and if you consider helpful please consider uh, please consider subscri subscribing this channel and uh, like share and uh, subscribe uh, 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 this channel uh, I will keep on making uh, very uh, helpful and useful videos for our fellow planning engineer my next plan is to make the video uh, on the same topic multiple float part but that time I will use instead of total float i will use the free float and i i will as i so i say two three times before that the difference of total float and free float is that total float is considering the overall project and overall progress while the free float is considering the intermediate milestone or intermediate activity in the program so thank you for very very much again for your time and please don't forget to like share and subscribe see you soon in next video take care and bye bye